Good morning. Beautiful song. That's that's like a that's like a my life. Lord did in my life. And thank you for the uh, opportunity that uh, elders give me to share today my testimony after nine years. I remember nine years ago I, I came here to to this church and to Australia actually. And your church invited me to come here to this to Brisbane. And I'm thankful to the Lord that God gave me faithful family and brothers and sisters. Uh, my, uh, I'm really not feeling that my cousins or my brothers or my mom are not here because God gave me here. And today I am here to share about my, my life, about the journey that God, uh, how he came to my life. And as a, Kevin can't go to uh, Myanmar or, or he can't send the books. God say, God use anything for his glory, anywhere, even Quran. Quran was for, for people to be a convert to the to to Muslim to be Muslim, but sometimes God used that book also for uh, uh, to people know the truth and, and know him and come from darkness to the light. I, about 52 years ago, I was born in a Muslim family. And since I was seven or eight years old, that came to my mind up to, to uh, think about God, who is God. Actually, my, I was practiced uh, Muslim because of my father and my grandfather. Always I was behind my grandfather and I pray like him. They didn't know what I, I'm seeing, but uh, just I, I copy him when he uh, pray like uh, as a Muslim, and I did that. Then I start to ask about God. Who is God? Where is God? Why we can't see God physically? Always uh, the elders told me, grandfather and the, the others, uh, God is in heaven, in, 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 in the sky, and he is very far from us. But if we do good, he will be good with us. If we do bad, like uh, he punishes us. And, and that's, that's like, uh, uh, that's normal. And always uh, I feel fair from God. Oh, if I do this, God will punish me. That wasn't love and uh, obeying and, and faithful to him. But slowly, slowly, <coughs> I start to read the, uh, when I, I start, uh, when I learned the reading, how to read the books after I went to school. And then uh, I read the books and then the Red Army came to Afghanistan. If you people remember that time in 1978, uh, communist people come to, by, they, by mashallah, they take over the government and then they invite Red Army to Afghanistan after six, seven months. And uh, Afghan people start to fight against the Red Army and that war continually still, that's 44 years. And that war is not, not end. It's sadly. But God work in life of people. Like me and like now in hundreds of Afghan brothers and sisters around the world and inside of Afghanistan. And that's really encouraging for me. 30 years ago, it was really difficult to people say, oh, we are Christian. We are Christian. We convert. We came from Islam to Christian. But God, he's, he's not weak. Our God is not weak and not, not sleep and not far from us. He work on the heart of people and people change. He changed the people. And, and I'm one of them. When I search about God, he said, okay, I'm coming to you. If you like me, I want to come. I said, uh, God said, I'm standing behind the door and, and knocking. Kevin said, 
the door had a one handle, not two, last week. And that's true. And that was, for me, it is around 15 years God knocked the door. And I not opened, not pressed the handle to open the door. Yeah, any, when the Red Army came to Afghanistan, Afghan people start to fight against them. And when I finished high school, I, I not went to, 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 uh, to put continue my, my uh, study because that my dream was to be a pilot. And I went outside of the city and I take Kalashnikov to fight against the Red Army. God's plan was different uh, for me. Then, why I went and joined the, the Red Army, the Mujahideen people to fight against the Red Army? Because I had a lots of questions about the God. And nobody gave me answer, where is God? And uh, one day, after I read a lots of books, I read the books that somebody uh, be martyred, then fight against the infidel people and be killed, be martyr, will go to heaven and see God. I asked that question from my teacher, from the religious teacher at the school, before I finished the high school. And the relig he was a good man, an honest man. I said, please give me honestly the answer. If I, if someone, if some infidel uh, people, army come and take over the Islamic country and people fight against them and they be martyred in this way. Can they go to heaven and see God? He said, definitely yes. They will go to heaven if they martyr in this way. And I thought, oh, I got my I got my answer. To find God, to go to heaven and find him and see him and can talk with him. I have to be be martyr. I fight with the, this infidel people and be martyr and go directly to heaven. But God had another plan for me. When I finished high school, I went to the village and take Kalashnikov. That I'm, when I'm, now I'm thinking, I didn't fight for my country. I, I, I fight against the Red Army to be a martyr and go to, to, to see God, to heaven and see God. That's, that's when I'm thinking about this. That was the reason. And at the beginning, that was really simple things for me to do. But slowly, slowly, because I was very involved, I was involved with very uh, sensitive operations. And to be honestly, to be martyr and go to heaven, I just said not. I, I wasn't a suicide bomber, but I was really involved with the sensitive operation. Then the the leader people. They thought, he is a brief man. Maybe you need more training. And then they sent me for, for training. I went three months and then come back. And then another three months. After six months, I come and I was a destroyer. I was like, a, I know about many things. Now, maybe that's different, but in my time, I learned many things. They, they teach me to how to destroy, how to destroy people, how to destroy tanks, how to destroy buildings. Come back and they post me as a first, as a, as a commander, as a junior commander. I was too young, but I, I was really active. And they post me as a commander. When they post me as a commander, I was at the border of Iran and Afghanistan to supply the weapon inside. When the weapon come from other countries, from Pakistan and Iran to that area, then I supply that, that things during the night with the, with the, without light. Ten people at the back, and, and at the youth, two-wheel drive youth, 1986 youth, Toyota, and I drive and uh, supply that uh, weapons inside. As much we went far, we, d we did that. And even sometimes the, the, there wasn't a road. We not used the road, just so we drive. Uh, one person was at the front sometime, 
and he guide us to come. There is not uh, any any um, uh, any big things to you uh, go down the big hall or something. And that was for a long time. I did that. Was a commander and fight and and, and supply the weapon. But during the day, we had a lots of time all day. All day we sleep and read the book and 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 uh, did pray like a Muslim people to be uh, for for blessing. And my blessing was that time to read the Quran, the holy book of Muslim friend. I read Quran one time, twice, and third time. After three times, Quran is a big book. After three times, I read the Quran. I feel I can't understand because this is in Arabic language, and, and, and I can't I really I can't understand. But seeing this is for only for blessing, I decide to find a good Quran in my language, Arabic, and translate to my language as well. When I start to read the Quran, the first time was like a, something came to my mind. Oh, the second time. The third time, another three times I read Quran with translator in, uh, in my, la my language. After three times read the Quran, after read a lots of books about the prophets, about Jesus Christ through the Islam uh, 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 theology about Jesus Christ. When I read the Quran this, the last time, I feel something different. This person, Jesus Christ, in Quran, that was different, really different. The things we we uh, I read the, the books and I heard from people, I heard from the teachers and mullahs, that was different. And then something came in my mind and heart to know better about Him. I have to find and know better about Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ really? How? How Quran told me because I I really respect the Quran on that time and uh, each Muslim, all the Muslim, they respect Quran. This is holy book. Even if you uh, you touch the Quran without resuming, without cleaning your body and touch the Quran, this is seen. This is not allowed. And when you uh, take the Quran with, with cleaning your body, you have to uh, kiss the book and, and respect this. I was like that, and then put at the at the cover, and very nice cover, and put the top of the everywhere, not put under the under the people or means the the other floor. I don't know now people when building the build what they doing that because each room each each house of the Muslim have a Quran. I asked this question from uh, Mullah when I was in Pakistan, but not give me any answer about that. Okay. When understand about Jesus Christ that he is different, he has start to work in my life. Without I understand about that, one night I was asleep and I saw a dream about a person, he stand far from me and asking me, come to me, come to me. And I said, oh, how I come to you? It's between dark gap between us. I can see his face. He's different. He didn't have a turban. He didn't have a saw. And he's not on the horse. And we, we heard and read the book. The Imam Zaman or uh, the last, last prophet of Muslim means Imam Zaman they called. He came. He will come uh, with horse and saw. He have a turban and but this person was different. No horse, no saw, and no turban, nothing. Just a, a person with a robe white, like a light. He came and asking me, come to me. And I said, how I come to you? That's a big, big gap. Then the dream was in my mind. And I, I, I was to tell about the dream to the ask about the meaning of the dream because Muslim people when they saw the dream they're asking what mean the dream then suddenly one or two two days later I during the breakfast time at the cave I asked this uh, I asked uh, I and share my my dream with uh, 
with the, our group's mullah and ask him, could you please explain to me, I saw the dream like this. I didn't tell him something I read about Jesus Christ. I just asked him, I saw the dream and I want to know, could you please explain to me? He said, yes, Farid, you saw the very important dream. You saw the dream about the Imam Zaman. I mean, the person that I told you, he will come. He is, now he is disappeared, but God will bring him one day, and he will come with the saw and turban and, and, and at the top of horse, and then he bring all justice on the world. He said, you see dream about that person, and you will be, it, this is very blessing, and you will be martyr very soon. When he say you will be martyr very soon, for long time I try to be martyr and go to heaven. I thought, I don't want to die. <laughs> that's, that's really uh, was difficult for me. I said, oh, I don't want to die. Because when I start to understand about Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit start to work on me, he bring some changes on me. But because I was a commander, it was very shame to, to say, oh, I don't want to die. If you are commander, you have to breathe. You have to be encouraged for others. If they want to die, you have to, okay, go. But encourage people and you be strong. And, and, and I not really uh, let them know about that, but internally was like a war inside of me. Oh, Farid, you want to die in this stage. I don't want to die. You will be martyr. No, no, this is, I think that's different. I was wrong. Then that's the area. I love this area and I wish to go on one sometime. I visit this area. I don't know, can or not. And that God, Jesus Christ, found me there. Was war inside of me. I really can't explain about that time, about that, that feeling. And then the real, another physical war was big, a strong attack from government at the top of our area, in this area, to take over this area. About 25 people of my group, my friend, and around me, they will die that day. And these people, yeah, only two people of them are die, uh, are alive. Three people and one be sit beside me. The left side, he die. The three stand, they die. The middle one with the green uh, jacket, he is alive. He is very old now. I heard. The other one, he is, he is alive, but he is, he is cancer and in the last stage. The, when uh, in 2020 I went to Iran, uh, I, I visit him and yeah. Yeah, all, the, all these people are die. Just uh, Farid is here. And the Farid was a person, was at the, 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 the the first line to be martyr and go to heaven. But God's plan is different. Uh, Sometimes I'm thinking why I'm alive, then suddenly coming the answer, automatically coming to me, yes, you know why you are alive. Because that was God's plan to me. And one of my friends was behind of the machine gun, he died. He killed, he, he was killed, and then I took his dead body and I sit behind the machine gun and uh, start to fight. But after that, me and the machine gun, after some, some, some few minutes, we blew up and uh, crashed down. And when I opened my eyes, I was at hospital, cross border in Iran. And that was the time for my decision, really. But when I was in hospital, people come to me and said, Farid, we saw you crash down from the other side of the mount, and we saw you crash down, but how you came up? Because we found you at the, up the top of the hill, the place you down. I said, I don't know really about that. That was 
amazing for them when I told them, look, some of you are alive and you know I share about a dream with you some days before. I saw the same person when I was crashed down, when I crashed down. I saw the same person and people didn't believe and some of them say, oh, that's poor Farid, he lost his mind. Some people laugh on me and make a joke, but doesn't matter for me. It was clear for me. It is clear for me. Then, because I wasn't really uh, serious injured, the senior commander came to me and said, Farid, we want you to go back to the field. We need you to go back to field. There is still the war is uh, continuing. We need you to go there. I said, I don't want to go. He tried and he used different option to convince me to go back to the field to that area and fight but I I decide I said no I want to go and, my, uh, and visit my family even he the last of uh, the last uh, his uh, uh, saying was Farid we we told you uh, you are a, a, a brief person but sorry to tell you you are a coward because you don't want to go back. But I said, that's all right. Anything you want to think about me, I don't want to go. Because I, I got decision to go and find the person that he was with me. He, he came to my life and changed my life. The person he tried to be martyr for many years, many time. Then after read the Quran, even he need to be more strong to be martyr. But he, God changed me. I was changed person. I said, no, I want to go and, and, and see my family. Not told him I want to go and uh, search about Jesus Christ. Come back to, uh, from the, uh, the hospital, I come to the big city that my family were there in Iran. As a refugee, they, that time, uh, they were as a refugee. I went to the house. Mom was happy. Father was happy. Brothers, everyone was very, they were very happy. But I wasn't happy. Every day I went to shrine. There is a big shrine and very important shrine for the, for the Shia people. I spent hours there and crying and crying and crying and said, where are you, God? I can't find you. I don't know, really. I lost my way. I don't know what should I do. I was young, about 21, 22 years old. And I said, I lost everything. One day on that shrine, again, something came in my mind. Go and ask from Christian people. Christian, because Christian people know about Jesus Christ, about Isa, son of Mary. In my language, we call Isa. Then I say, oh, I know about the church. There is a church. I know the church was with the big cross there. Uh, I think it was Armenian church. Same day I went to that church. I knocked the door. I knocked the door. They opened the small, small door on the big door. What's name in English? I don't know. They open and say, what do you want? I said, I want to know about Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? Could you please explain to me? The guy asked me, are you a Muslim or Christian? I said, Alhamdulillah, I'm a Muslim, but I want to know about Jesus Christ. He said, that's too dangerous. Go away. Close the door again. I knock. Five times. Five times. After five times, I, I really uh, uh, was really, uh, what's calling in English? He had to ask. I want to know. He gave me a phone number. said, this is the phone number. We don't know if he, this person can help you or not. I take the, the phone number and went to the, the phone booth on that time. I ring, a guy, a brother was there. When I explained to him, he asked what, what happened. I, know, I told him, I want to know about Jesus Christ. He really with kindness invited me to his house. I went to his house. He was a person about 20, 20 years older than me, about on that time he was about 40, 45 years old and he was very kind, very gentle and he asked me to come, respect me. 
He didn't say anything, anything about the Islam. When I share about the Quran, I read the Quran, I, I was there, and, and that all the story I tell him. He didn't say anything that I heard. When I told him, yes, still, I'm a Muslim. But he worked with me slowly, slowly. We had a weekly meeting. We uh, meet each other. I went to his place. We went to the outside and, and, and spent time with each other. And he explained about Jesus Christ to me. But very gently and slowly, slowly. But still, because I was very strong, a strong Muslim, I, 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 I still believe Jesus Christ is a good person, like a good prophet, major prophet, and, uh, and yes, but he is under the Muhammad. Muhammad is m much more higher than Jesus Christ. That was in my mind still. Then, uh, after, I think after six months, they had a, the, we, we had a group, and uh, uh, they invite a person as a, as a guest, he, the person came to share the message there that night on the group. And he was like a charismatic person. He was right. I was wrong. He came and he, but the, the way that he used for me was a bit difficult. A bit, maybe wasn't right on that time. He said, Jesus Christ, son of God. Jesus Christ, God. When he said, Jesus Christ, son of God, I immediately stand and said, when God get married to have a baby, but when he said, no, this is, I'm not saying this. He, they tried to explain to me and convince to me. I said, no, I did a part of Quran that God not had any partner or that's in Arabic. I said, no, you are not good people. I have to, uh, no, I can't come and have a relation with you. I, I, uh, I really have a doubt about you because you're bringing a partner when God get married. That was Satan to blind me that time. Then I stopped fellowship with them. Then I find a way to go to Dubai for work. I went to Dubai and find some, after some months, I found a job and then found uh, some Christian people because Jesus Christ was inside of me. He worked on me and he not leave me alone. And uh, I, I meet some Indian Christian people from India. They said we are Christian. We had a worship each Friday. And uh, then after the worship, went to the, to the bar and start dancing and start drinking and like, a, like a other people. One day that was a question for me. And that question was, why we are Christian? We worshiping the God here, the Lord here, and then going to the bar and drinking and, and doing the things. Even some of you, I know you have a relation with the other woman. Then uh, the guy told me, Farid, we belonging to the God's family. We can't do anything and then repent because Jesus Christ crucified for us. I said, it is repeat and repeat. We can do repeat and repeat or one time. He said, no, any time we can do and then uh, we can repent. He said, your God must be wrong. If you are God teach you like this, I can't, I don't want to follow that God. And that meeting with that people, they took me away for around 15, 14 to 15 years away from God. But I was unfaithful. I closed the door. But faithfully, Jesus Christ was behind the door and he knocked the door to open and ask me. Time to time, ask me, open the door. I start my business there. I start to earn lots of money. And uh, to be honest, if you want to be a successful businessman, you have to be a good cheater in that country. I was one of them. And I told to Jesus Christ, I love you, I know you are right, but I can't follow you. I can't follow you because if I want to follow you, I have to lift many things behind. And I wasn't, maybe I, I can't be a successful businessman. But Jesus Christ faithfully worked on me. I went back to Afghanistan, Iran, and Pakistan. I met Prila, had my business, I met Prila. I went and asked Prila from the family, uh, 
Yeah, they said yes. They asked me what was it, what is your religion. I said I was Shia, because Prila's family was Sunni, and they told, okay, he was Shia. He is a he is a Sunni now. They were happy. They said yes. We went back after the first time Taliban gone. We went back to Afghanistan, and I found a, a job in UNHCR to work there as a guest house manager. But uh, there was, God sent another person to, to my life. A lady was, a Christian lady was worked there, but I thought all the, uh, one day I asked her, who are you? Why you are different than the other people? Then she said, Farid, I'm a Christian. I said, look, these all people are white from America, Germany, Australia, Canada, and any, everywhere. They are from Western country, but they are all Christian. Then she explained to me, no, they are not Christian. Then she explained, and I think she was a God, uh, God plan to my life. Then I, one day I was read my Bible, Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33. And I repent on that day because when I uh, when I read the, the Bible and Jesus Christ said uh, Matthew chapter ten verse thirty two uh, whoever acknowledge me before men I will also acknowledge acknowledge him before my father in heaven but whoever this uh, whoever disown me before men i will disown him uh, before my father in heaven then i thought oh, i am a big loser i was silent christian i had a fellowship with christian that time but i was silent that day when i read this words two words of the by my bible at my office, I bow down and I start to crying for hours and crying and said, God, please forgive me. And that day I feel how I'm a, a sinful person, how, how really I'm a bad person. I was unfaithful to the Lord, to Jesus Christ, to Lord, my, my savior, and who is my savior? And I repent that day. and give my life to the Lord. It was very difficult for my family, for Perila, because she decided if I'm a Christian, she get a divorce. I had a children, I love my children, my family. But that was God's plan. God worked 15 years in my life, worked four or five year, months in her life to change her, because she was soft, I was very hard. And God changed her as well, and then the other, other story is very big to God, how he saved us to send to Pakistan. We start our ministry. We, we, we lead the church of Afghan church, Muslim background church in Pakistan. And the every doors were, when the every door was closed for us, then God sent us to Australia. That was like a miracle. It's not easy to, to people come to Australia and somehow, yes, but for me it was very difficult. But God sent me to Australia. And I know why I am alive. And I promise to the Lord, Lord, tell you want, I want to share about your love, about your grace, and about your truth to the people. To the people that don't know. They think they know, but they don't know really. They are the, going to the wrong way. And I ask God, God, please use me in this in this time, use me like a GPS to the people to tell them, you tell them. And a time was, I sent bullet to the heart of people. I was a destroyer, but God changed me. Yeah, that's the, the time with the three boys. <laughs> we had a motorbike, one helmet at the Bible college that time. That was a group we had uh, street evangelized in Pakistan and that's the time that God made me really uh, ready to to share about him with boldness not with boldness fight to be martyr 
with boldness to talk about, about his mercy, about his kindness, about, about his truth to the people and send the love bullet of Jesus Christ to the people's heart, not the, 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 the metal bullet. And I'm really thankful to the Lord. When I opened the door of my heart, he came and, and, and started to eat with me. And God, God is moving. He is not silent. Our God is not sleep. Our God is not far from us. He is with us. He is here. And I want to say thank you for all your time and your uh, like a relationship during the this nine years you have with me and my family. God bless you. And please share my testimony with others. Not, no, not necessary for my name and who, but God's working. Our God is alive. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Fareed. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and Perilla and the family. Thank you for sharing with us. And um, I think we have to have the next chapter, not too far in the future, okay? Because we want to hear more of this story. It's great. Praise the Lord uh, as to how he's been working in your heart and life. Let's just uh, pause for prayer and then we'll go and have a, a cup of tea. Heavenly Father, thank you for Fareed and Perilla. And the family, we commend them to your grace. Thank you, Father, for the way that you have worked in their hearts and lives. Thank you for their amazing testimony. Father, work in our hearts, in our lives. Enable us to see you, to know that you're there, and to follow you. We thank you for this refreshment that you've provided for us. In Jesus' name, amen. When you hear the little bell, please come back for the worship in about 20 minutes. Thank you.